welcome students to my online tutorials i am baldish kapula and in my today's class we are going to discuss about letter writing this letter writing discussion is based on the syllabus and norms of cbse particularly for class 10 students letters are of two types one is informal or friendly letter and second one is formal letters formal letters are again of two types one is business and the other one is official letters informal or friendly letters you all must be aware about in fact you must have written also in your junior classes and in class 10 we are going to discuss about formal letters i repeat once again formal letters are further divided into two types number one business letters and second is official letters now what is the difference between the two there is a big difference between a formal letter and informal letter let me brief you about that number 1 we will discuss about language language of formal letter is always formal it's very humble it's polite we use simple short words grammar is correct semantically the sentences are correct no usage of words like hi bye buddy or slangs are permissible in formal letters they have the prescribed word limits as per cbse we use 100 to 150 words to write a formal letters we use very simple language grammatically correct language no use of proverbs or sayings or quotes are used in formal letters informal letters on the other hand gives you freedom to play with the language the language you use is very friendly but yet since it is in the written form you need to be very polite humble and you need to use the legal language it doesn't have any specific word limit you may use proverbs idioms phrases etc the formal letters as they are further divided into official letters and business letters there is no division of informal or friendly letter friendly letter is just one then each of this formal letter like business letters or official letters they have got their specified format which we need to adhere to there is no specified format for friendly letters it's very simple the formal letter according to cbse carries 8 marks there is no informal letter in the syllabus of class 10 in cbse now coming down to the types of formal letter students as i told you formal letters are part of your syllabus and we had further discussed also i told you earlier also official letters it is divided into two types one is official letters the other one is business letters now official letters are further categorized into four types number one letter to the editor which i am very sure you must have done in class 9 the second letter of complaint the third letter of inquiry the fourth applications like job application leave applications etc now here i would like to mention students letter of complaint again are of two types one is letter of complaint for services and letter of complaint for goods that i'll be telling you in details when we'll be taking up this letters individually in details now coming down to the business letter students we have two types one is letters for placing order and letters of supply now coming down to the marking scheme students or the things which you really need to be uh, you need to focus on you should keep in mind number one objective marking so you have to use an appropriate style and format to write the formal letter as well as informal letter okay then marks are not given to the students if you only write the format and you do not write anything within the letter however credit or marks are given to the creativity of the candidate for presenting his or her own ideas now let me tell you how these eight marks are divided the format of the letter carries one mark i repeat again students i'm talking only about the formal letters we have formal letters in our syllabus so the format of the letter carries one mark then it this comprises of sender's address date receiver's address subject heading salutation closing content of the letter which carries four marks then expression which carries three marks now these three marks is further divided 
into coherence and relevance of the idea which is one and a half mark and then second part accuracy appropriate words and correct spelling again this consists of one and a half marks this makes it three marks so we have one plus four plus three it comes out to be eight now coming down to the format of the letter students everything in the letter is left aligned so we begin with the first part that is sender's address followed by date followed by receiver's address which is followed by subject which is followed by salutation which is followed by body of the letter the body of the letter is basically made up of three parts the first one is introductory or the opening paragraph the second is the paragraph which consists of subject matter or the content of the letter and the third is concluding or the closing paragraph last comes the signature let's discuss the format of the formal letters in detail let's discuss the format of the formal letters in detail students because what i have found and noticed is the students are basically confused where to leave a line where not to leave a line how to write the date so let's discuss each part each component in details first of all remember we are discussing only the formal letters all of them are left aligned so the first part which we were telling you is your sender's address sender's address comprises of house number followed by locality street lane number in the second line followed by city town etc in the third line students do not use comma at the end of the lines example house number 374 next line mg road next line jaipur that's it the next is date students in some of the letters in some cases what we write is we write date immediately after sender's address and then we leave line that is we leave the line between the date and the receiver's address but you may also leave a line before date and after date both are correct don't get confused over it i repeat once again you may leave a line or a gap before date and after date both are correct but there are certain ways you are supposed to write date like 20th april 2020 20 april 2020 april 20 comma 2020 again i repeat you may leave a line before the date as well as after the date after date comes receiver's address same rules are to be obeyed as far as sender's address was there receiver's address comprises of name designation of the person like the editor the store manager the police commissioner the director the officer in charge etc followed by the name of the newspaper company organization institute etc and then its address of correspondence like locality lane city town etc again the same rule applies do not use comma or punctuation marks example i have given in the slide you can see the example the editor the times of india new delhi the editor the tribune chandigarh the director klm institute next line is ng road jaipur the store manager star electricals hoskars new delhi the officer in charge sanitation department mdc panchkula students i would like to mention here that if you do not know the name or the designation of the person to whom you need to address the best way to write is you may write down the phrase the officer in charge the right way of writing this phrase is mentioned in the slide let's discuss about the subject students subject is very important part of the formal letters and there are lots and lots of confusion about it first of all you are going to write the complete word subject s will be capital s u b j e c t and it is followed by colon the purpose of the subject is very important in formal letters it tells the receiver or the officer or the person who is receiving a letter about the matter about the issue or the problem in short before they go through the letter in details hence it is of utmost important and then there are certain rules to be obeyed number 1 the subject should not be more than 5 to 7 words use very simple and short sentences subject is always written i repeat this is very important students because i find maximum confusion is occurring in this part whether we should write subject before the salutation or we should write the subject after the salutation i repeat once again the purpose of subject is for the clarity and to make the person who is receiving your letter 
aware or know about what the letter is written hence the subject is always written above the salutation in all official letters and it can be written above or below the salutation in case of business letters salutation you can write either sir or madam or you can also write dear sir or madam you can also write respected sir and madam but respected sir and madam is written in the formal letters which you are addressing to the institutional heads principals teachers hods etc now here i would like to mention one one thing again students you can also write like you can address even to the board like board of directors board members you can also use plural forms for the members but otherwise we don't use sirs or madams we always use sir or madam the next part is body of the letter which consists of three parts number 1 is introductory opening paragraph students in this first paragraph be very brief and specific and tell about the topic which you are going to write about the next is your second part which is the content this may consist of one or two paragraphs depending upon the topic but as cbse has told us to write the letter within 100 to 150 words usually it consists of one paragraph only in this you can discuss about the topic be specific because you need to give your suggestions you need to give your ideas you also need to give your solutions you need to give your remedies so be very specific and very wise with the use of words over here the last part of the letter is your closing paragraph we also call as concluding paragraph in this you can once again highlight the topic you can request for the action remedial measures to be taken etc but be very very brief now the last part of the letter is signature now the signature part consists of thanks the name of the person who is writing the letter and the designation example thanking you or thank you then next line you can write yours truly or sincerely and then the name if no name is given you can write on xyz and then the designation like if you are given if you are writing as a cultural head hod you can mention that within bracket now very important thing i need to mention over here and a common mistake which i have seen the students use y o u r apostrophe s students we don't use apostrophe s we don't write y o u r apostrophe s we only write y o u r s yours at the end like yours truly it is not yours with apostrophe then after the signature student you can leave some space and then you can write ps that is postscript if you want to specify any point important point and you can also write enclosure or enclosures enlcs if you are sending photocopy or the copies of documents like photocopy of warranty card receipt number etc usually these are used in the complaint letters etc and all this we will discuss when we will be taking those letters individually now very important thing over here is that students when we use salutation starting point i mean i mean to say that suppose we start the letter with sir or madam then we close the letter like we close the letter with yours truly or sincerely you can use now in the salutation if we are using the word dear sir or madam then we close the letter with yours sincerely the third part now when we are using the salutation like respected sir or madam then we close the letter with yours obediently as these types of letters are usually written to the heads the principals to the teachers to the hods now the words like many times i find in most of the books also and many times i find the letters which are closed using the words like lovingly affectionately faithfully students these words are no longer preferred so hence it's my advice not to use them 